Our planet, our response, is looking at some of the main causes of biodiversity loss around the world, the importance of biodiversity, and how you can be part of the solution for combating the biodiversity crisis. Let's take a look at Emma Louise's response. My name's Emma Louise. We're making this episode on pollution because we want to find out what we can be doing to protect our planet for us and for future generations. Let's find out together. Pollution is the introduction of harmful materials into the environment. There are lots of different types of pollution, but the three major types are air pollution, water pollution, and land pollution. In urban settings, it's crucial to address the major challenge of air pollution, which is largely a result of human activities like burning fossil fuels and vehicle traffic. Although air quality has improved significantly in recent decades, many parts of the world still have unacceptable levels of air pollution. Air pollution contributes to climate change. It affects health, contributing to conditions like heart disease and asthma. And recently, it's also been found to affect children's ability to learn. As well as this, air pollution can also cause major damage to our ecosystems. Even the most basic ecosystem functions, like plant growth, can be affected. Let's move on to a more specific example. It involves both air pollution and a process called eutrophication. Eutrophication is when nutrients accumulate in bodies of water. This causes harmful algal blooms, dead zones and dying fish. Sometimes eutrophication is caused by the leaching of fertilisers from agriculture, but often it's the result of air pollution. In particular, air pollution emissions of sulphur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can become deposited in water as a result of acid rain. This increases the levels of minerals in the pond, which encourages the growth of algae, forming a green bloom over the water surface. The bacteria that decompose the dead plants respire and use up the oxygen in the water. The low oxygen levels make it difficult for aquatic insects and fish to live, and eventually the lake may be left completely lifeless. With eutrophication, it can also cause major changes in aquatic community structure. It can lead to more fast-growing algae species, including toxic species. It can also result in macroinvertebrates, shifting from sensitive species to more tolerant, sometimes non-native species. These dramatic changes at lower trophic levels may also lead to trophic cascading, going on to impact the composition and numbers of wider species. So overall, why is pollution important and why should we care? We need to address eutrophication within ponds from a wider climate change perspective. Due to the sheer number of ponds globally, they have the ability to really influence air pollution levels. Firstly, healthy pond environments can actually act as an important carbon sink, absorbing and storing carbon dioxide. However, as a result of eutrophication, the excess algae and plant matter eventually decompose producing and releasing large amounts of carbon dioxide into the surrounding atmosphere. These green waters are also an important contributor to methane emissions. That's a greenhouse gas that is up to 34 times more potent than carbon dioxide. In fact, the eutrophication of larger water bodies, such as lakes, could increase the emission of methane into the atmosphere by anywhere from 30 to 90% during the next 100 years. This is equivalent to 18 to 33% of annual carbon dioxide emissions from burning fossil fuels. So this creates a cycle. Eutrophication adds to air pollution, which is a large contributor to wider climate change. And that increased air pollution and climate change then increase the effects of eutrophication even further over time. However, beyond environmental impacts, there's also a significant social injustice that we need to address. Clean air is a basic need in a healthy environment for us all to live in, work in and bring up our families. But clean air is not currently accessible to all. Pollution levels today are having a devastating impact on society. A US-based study found that ethnic minority communities are 66% more likely to live in an area with poor air quality than white people. A UK-based study also found similar results for London here in the UK. As a result, there are an estimated 40 million people living in areas with illegal levels of air pollution in the UK. People on lower incomes are likely to be affected by air pollution because they get 
priced into housing that has poorer outdoor and indoor environments. People on lower incomes in the UK are disproportionately women and they're also disproportionately black, Pakistani and Bangladeshi households. Most of those groups um, are actually least likely to have generated that air pollution itself. That kind of real element of inequality is really worth highlighting. In fact, last December, Ella Kitty Deborah, a nine-year-old girl from South East London, was the first person in the UK to have air pollution listed as the cause of death on their death certificate. I think we will take a moment. What the coroner has also recommended is very important, and he has made it incredibly clear that unless his recommendations are implemented, people will continue to die. This problem demands action. Everyone should have clean air to breathe as a fundamental human right. Now, with all this in mind, what can we, as individuals, do to tackle the interconnected environmental and social threat of air pollution? First, let's take a look at something that we use daily, our cars. Clearly, there's too much traffic on our roads. We could all be traveling more sustainably, like walking or cycling. Alternatively, let's take a look at the future of electric vehicles. I feel like when people say EVs, many people think, oh, Tesla, unaffordable. Um, there are no different models. There are hundreds of options. So one of our goals is definitely to make it more affordable. And I guess what also feeds into affordability is, um, again, the market becoming more competitive. Uh, battery prices have been dropping and are at the, the lowest they have been before. But uh, it is schemes like salary sacrifice that will open up the opportunity to young adults. Um, as long as your, your company or the company that you're aiming to work for signs up to the scheme. I, I truly believe that the, the future is electric and that we are taking the right steps both in terms of technology um, as well as in terms of policy to reach that. However, it's not just the responsibility of us as individuals. We need to address this at an industry-wide level and hold the major polluters accountable. Their impact is huge. You know, businesses of all kinds contribute to air pollution. There's a lot more work to be done in terms of putting air pollution on the business agenda. So we set up initiatives like the Business for Clean Air um, Group in 2019, which is a free initiative essentially open to companies to make it clearer for them what contributions they're making to air pollution and the steps they can take to, to improve that situation. So we ran a kind of campaign, for example, called the School Run Scandal, and that was really highlighting the role that car companies haven't played. Um, in terms of stepping up enough to address the air pollution produced by their cars. So we ran a campaign with school children writing to those companies to talk about the role they need to be playing to step up. And there's a lot more that can be done and would really kind of encourage your members when we, we are running campaigns to get involved and to, to use their voices to, to, to call for action. Just remember, whatever action you might take, no matter how little it might seem, it's important to take it, be proud of taking it and share what you've done. Ultimately, the air pollution crisis is solvable. Here's our response. What's yours? I've highlighted a few ways to tackle air pollution, but of course there are other types of pollution, water, noise, light, that all threaten our biodiversity. We'll be putting suggestions about these on the Ecosapien and Earth Minutes Instagram accounts. Links in the description below and be sure to let us know if you have any other ideas for tackling the biodiversity crisis.